Hey, what's up? How's it going? So today I want to show you how to make a quick and dirty debug console for your runtime build because uh, debug logs don't work at runtime. They're only for in the editor. I'm going to try to make this super quick because I want to go on a bike ride and uh, let me just show you what I got going on here. So, alright, uh, that's just some message about the analytics stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter, but what I got is this little cube, and when I click on it, it says, you clicked on the cube. If I right-click on it, it gives a warning saying, be careful, you just right-click the cube, and if I middle-click it, it gives an error. Alright, so we've got, you know, three basic types of debug logs. The difference being, if I build it out, just for the sake of example, you might already know what's coming got our build and there's our cube and I click it and nothing happens because uh, you know it's not wired up to this console down here and there's no nothing for it to do at runtime okay so we're gonna fix that first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a come on UI canvas alright I'm gonna call this debug canvas one thing I like to do really quick is with the canvas scaler, I'll scale it with the screen size and set it to match the height, and I just leave it at 800 by 600, uh, and that's fine. All right, we need a couple things here, and this is going to be a fairly simple one. So, all right, I'm going to add an image, and this will be the backdrop. I'm going to turn the opacity down a little bit so you can kind of see through it, and then... The dimensions I like are a width of 400 and a height of 300, which is a quarter of the canvas scale that we set up. The other thing I'm going to do is I am going to anchor it to the bottom left. Uh, this really just depends where you want the canvas to sit at. Um, and then I'll move it over so, so it's down here. All right, and this is going to be the debug display. It's not important what you're naming it, but just just to keep things kind of organized. Okay, uh, next thing is within that, I want to add a text. I don't want to use TextMash Pro because uh, it just adds another thing that the script is using, or you know, this is just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to go down to Legacy and click Text. And uh, I want to make sure rich text is turned on because we're going to use that to change the color of the text. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to anchor this to the top left. I don't know if I said bottom right or bottom left last time, but I kind of mix up left and right sometimes. But this is going to be anchored to the top left. And then, oh yeah, and we need to change the width. So because it's in a 400 by... 300 display, I'm going to do a width of 350 and a height of 280. Oh, and that just about places it where, where I want it, so perfect. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to add uh, the one feature that this has, and that's going to be the ability to pull this little console up and down. I'm going to add a slider. I'm going to turn it on the Z axis 90 degrees because that's the axis pointed right through the screen. And then I'm going to give it a width, which is actually the height as it's set up here, of 300, which is the same as our, our uh, display here. And then move it, oh, we can, let's anchor that to the bottom right and move it so that the knob is at the bottom right and then what I want to do then is I'm gonna turn off the uh, the background and the fill area because I all I want is the knob you'll be able to see the effect in the in the display box okay so the way that's going to work is on the slider we're going to add an event. So we need a 
script for that event to talk to. So back on the debug canvas, I'm going to add a component, and that's going to be called debug console. Okay, new script, create and add. It will add it in, and then we can double click and bring that up. Okay, so we got a couple things we want this to do. One thing is we're going to be using some UI elements. So we need to type in Unity Engine UI, and then um, one thing I'm going to do right off is I'm going to make this a single a singleton. So I'm going to add public static debug console instance, or you can call it singleton if you like, and I'm gonna make this a awake function. I just like to do this set up singletons in awakes rather than start. And this is my quick and dirty way of doing a singleton. If C debug console instance not equal to null, meaning it's already been assigned to, we'll do destroy immediate game object, and that'll just get rid of this canvas entirely. Else, debug console.instance equals this. Alright. Um, we don't need the update. And, um, okay. So, next, we want to cache a few things. So I'm going to do serialized field rect transform display rect and that's the the backdrop for our debug console and then we're going to do one more of those serialize field text display text and that'll be the text field that we're writing to that we're writing our logs to okay so um I already told you we're going to use that slider so I need a function that's going to allow us to move this up and down via the slider. So I'm going to call that public void change display position. And we're going to pass in a float for the new position. And then the way we're going to assign that is display rec dot anchored position. And this is a special rect transform um, variable. It's a vector 2 for the position relative to the anchor of the uh, the UI element. So vector2 display rect dot anchor position dot x and let me make this a little wider so I don't fall off the edge and then what I want to do is I actually want to cache the height so I'm going to add another variable called init height this is so we have sort of a baseline to go off of. And in awake, we're going to say init height equals display rect dot anchored position dot y. Boop. Okay, so then here it's going to be init height plus new pause. All right. And that's that. And let's go ahead and save this. Go back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the slider, go to this event, add an event, drag in the debug canvas, because that's where the debug console script is at. And then we'll go to debug console and go to the dynamic float thing, because we can just pass in the float of the slider and do change display position. Now, right now, the, the sliders just uh, range from 0 to 1, but we want to do not... Uh, so the, the entire length of the slide is 300, but you subtract the size of the slider and the, or the slider knob, which is 20. So the max value is going to be 280, which is 300 minus 20. And then that, uh, that's pretty much good to go. Uh, but then we'll grab the display and we'll move it down into position. 
like so. And then I'm going to save it really quick. And why is it TextMask Pro? Get out of here. Okay. And then I'm going to click that. And oh, look at that. I forgot to assign this, of course. This happens every time. <laughs> I've I had to I'm having to record this again because the sound didn't work the first time around. Go ahead and assign those things to Oh, display text. I don't know why that's I don't know why that's cutting off. That's Oh. I'm looking at the wrong looking at the wrong script. Display text. Just make that a little more clear. Okay, and once again, let me clear that, and we have a working slider. You can extend it down a little more, I guess it, that's fine. That's fine for now. So, all right, so now we actually need the lo debug logging functionality. So go back into your debug console script, and... See, this is what we got going on right now in the in the cube. So when you click on it, debug log, debug log warning, debug log error. So those are the three things we're going to add to this. So let's get started. Public void log, and then it's going to be string new log. And the way that's going to work is we're going to assign to that display text field uh, new, oh, dis display, I'm sorry, display text dot text equals new log plus a line break plus the text that was already in the text field. Oops. Text, text, perfect. Okay, so let me just show you that really quick. Save that. Start it up. Right, just clear that out so it's not clutter. And silly, silly me. Uh, I forgot to assign this. Remember to assign that. Save again and start her up. Come on. What did I what did I What's going on here? Oh. Ha ha ha. I've, you gotta add it. You gotta add it back. You gotta add it in here too. So debug console dot instance dot log, and then we actually just want to say the same thing. I'm gonna copy paste, plop that in there, and then uh, hopefully stop making a fool of myself. Stop it. Okay. Okay. There we go. See, it added text to the to the debug console, and uh, we're back in action. But right click, it adds it to the console. Doesn't add it there. Same thing with middle click. So we still have to add in two more functions. Real quick, over here. Let's say public void log warning. String new log. And this is pretty much the same, except it's going to add in some markup language that wor works with rich text. And the way that works is like so. Okay, so it's if you've ever used HTML, it's much like that. And then add that new login and then add in a close tag and then I'm also going to add the new line the, the line break tag right there and then 
add the old text back in. All right, and an important thing to note is you cannot have white space in your rich text, so none of this. Uh, it will not work. It will just look regular, and you don't want that. So, all right, we need, we got the warning, and we need the error. Copy, paste, change this to error, and change the color to red. Okay, save that. And we need to go back in here, and I'm just going to copy this. Debug console.instance.log warning. Uh, oh, well, it's a different message. And same for this one dot console dot instance dot log error and all right back in here hitting play waiting a moment clearing that click click boom all right we are good to go, but uh, in case you had any doubts, I'm going to build and run it, open it up, click, click, and boom goes the dynamite, as they say. Alright, and there you have it, a quick and dirty runtime debug console. I hope this helps you with all your debug stuff. I hope it I hope it helps you track down those issues cuz oftentimes the build has things going wrong that you could never foresee if you've just been running it in the editor. And um that's rough. That can be hard. So uh anyway, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. It's a little it's it's windy, but uh, but I'm I got to go on a bike ride. So uh oh man, this is the second time I had to record this and uh Hopefully it doesn't have to happen a third time. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.